Hello, Over the Peak. I'm going to continue with the Euro disaster stories and the great struggle to find the answer to the crisis. And as an introduction, I'll give you the Telegraph Mar Ambrose Evans Pritchard this morning, Monday, a modest proposal for Eurozone breakup. The Eurozone can, in theory, still be saved if two sets of conditions are fulfilled if the leaders of Germany, Austria, Finland and the Netherlands accept fiscal union and a common pooling of debt and can persuade their parliaments and courts to ratify such a revolution. And that kind of just sets the, um, the tone for the impossibility of all this. But just because something's impossible, we shouldn't just... Um, because the, the mind goes, well, if it's impossible, I'll ignore it then. And this is what they've done time after time after time and have got themselves in this position of reality biting their bottoms. So we are not going to ignore um, ignore this just because it's an impossible situation. So on the George Soros um, article that I quoted in number one, of the Euro things. Uh, Soros never speaks clearly, but if he was saying anything, he was saying that Europe should all band together, have Euro bonds, and be the United States of Europe. So, letters on that article are as follows. With Germany reunified, the main impetus behind the integration process was removed. Then, the financial crisis unleashed a pro process of disintegration. The decisive moment came after the Lehman Brothers collapsed and authorities had to guarantee that no other systemically important financial institution would be allowed to fail. I don't need to explain that, you will have got vaguely where we're going. The German Chancellor, Angela Merkel, insisted that there should be no joint EU guarantee of the banks. Each country would have to take care of its own institutions. That was the root cause of today's Euro crisis. Obviously, there's no root cause, and this Euro crisis is such a monster it can't even just be called the Euro crisis. But you can see that if Merkel at that point had gone and said, well, this is we need to protect the Euro banks, we need a Euro solution for the Euro banks, things certainly would be different now. But she chose for a nationalistic way of saving the individual national banks so it's kind of a a road was taken and it was an individual country road not a european road big comment but mr soros does not refer to another fundamental cause of the eurozone's travails during the 20 years since the Maastricht Treaty was negotiated, the large member states have become more dominant in the EU and the European Commission relatively weaker. We are now moving towards the Europe des Patries countries. Well, a Europe of nation states that General de Gaulle wanted. This trend has accelerated during the Euro crisis. The French and the Germans have sought to sideline the Commission and create intergovernmental rescue mechanisms. For all its imperfections, the current team of commissioners contain few stars. Only the Commission can consider the wider European good, protect the interests of smaller member states and ensure that EU rules, such as on deficits and the single market, are respected. The Commission, like France, doubted that the Germanic medicine for the EU prescribed that the EU prescribed for debtor countries would work, but lacked the authority to resist Berlin. And I don't think anybody's got respect for the European Commission, but it's right to say that it's the only body that tried to um, include all the smaller countries of Europe to make it a real Europe uh, talking as opposed to just a cobbled together um, agreement between France and Germany. Um, this is uh, the end of the Martin Wolf article that I also quoted. And I'm not sure what it's there for.
but I'll read it because I, I used to know at one time why I put it in the place it is. Anyway, so this is the end of the Martin Wolf article. These are dangerous times, and we must note this. This is sodding important stuff. The US may be on the verge of making among the biggest and least necessary financial mistakes in world history. Still possible. Unlikely, but possible. The Eurozone might be on the verge of a fiscal cum financial crisis that destroys not just the solvency of important countries, but even the currency union and, at worst, much of the European project again. Not as unlikely as the American thing, but certainly possible that un Europe and all it stood for for 30 years could unravel. These times require wisdom and courage among those in charge of our affairs. Because we can't forget there are people in charge of our affairs. In the US, utopians of the right are seeking to smash the state that emerged from the 1930s and the Second World War. In Europe, politicians are dealing with the legacy of a utopian project which requires a degree of solidarity that their peoples do not feel. How will these clashes between utopia and reality end? In late August, when I return from my break, we may know at least some of the answers. So, happy holiday, Martin. And I imagine that these letters now are on that Martin Wolf article, so there will be two links for this posting. These are dangerous times. It possibly could be the end of the great post-World War II social experiment. It always rested on growth and state generosity. Now, in mature economies, l like in human life, Growth in size has been replaced by growth in weight. Not particularly good sm spelling on this. The geriatric OECD are not fine athletes they once were. The lean and mean countries listen to those past glories with a smirk. In other words, the East is now just looking upon the West as a fat and bloated has-been. The ex-champions can only make vague promises and glorious predictions of growth, and which is pretty much gone. Like old Venice, they will cash their past to tourists and their pride for some monies. In other words, the East might come over and visit us on their holidays and drop us a few coins. Ufuk Senjes sounds a bit Turkish. I was happy to see Mr. Soros spelling out the origins of the EU. The policy objective in its creation was to avoid another great war. First World War, Second World War. Peace through mutual economic interest. That was one of the setups for the initial um, pact that started this European project. Now that we have achieved that, the case needs to be made for why to go for a United States of Europe? It's a good question. I can't see Germany invading Poland anytime soon, so the reason can no longer be not unity for peace. Um, what is the economic, political or other objective here? And the question must be asked. Everyone has a view on this, but I haven't heard anyone making a convincing case Arguments such as to hold strong against China and the US is insufficient and those of those of economies of scale and easier flow of capital, labour and benefits of con common law are weak at best and deceptive at worst. Indeed, um, if they're going to do the big thing, as Ambrose Evans Pritchard said, and go for political union, they will have to sell it to their peoples, and why? What What would be the big selling point? Next letter. Mr. Soros exhibits the typical response of modern elites when greater authority over people's lives doesn't yield the results they hoped for. Rather than rethinking whether assuming so much control was a good idea to begin with, their knee-jerk response is to seek yet more power. Aye. 
you're the mayor and you want the local government to spend more and more and have more control over people's lives in your town so you raise taxes and, and impose more regulations in your town but then businesses may start moving to other parts of the country so to stop this you raise national taxes and impose nas nationwide regulations businesses respond by departing for other nearby countries the elites response is to impose taxes and regulation on the whole continent but that might backfire because business may leave for the US or Asia or other more friendly environs. So the elites, e.g. Mr. Soros, push for a worldwide tax and regulatory regime. It won't end there, of course. There is never enough tax revenue or power for the elites to do everything they want. Do we have more? Yeah, Yankee in Vietnam writes, Mr. Soros is a brilliant man, no doubt. His, however, his belief that true Europeans ought to outnumber true Finns, that was one of his selling, his uh, bullet points, Soros, that um, true Europeans ought to outnumber true Finns, betrays a gentleman who is so far distant from the average man that his opinion should be ignored. I happen to be a citizen of the United States, which is a member of NAFTA, North American Free Trade Association, and I salute the flag of the United States of America. I never identify myself as a true North American. Sorry, George, but your underlying premise is false. And there we will leave the people talking about the United States of Europe and the possibility of putting it together. Till next time. Bye.